I'm like really, really chocolate. And Avery is like even more chocolate than me. And I'm so we own the we, we <laughs> like we deep, dark, you know, complected human beings, like heavily yes. melanated. So like if yes. like it would kind of me and Avery is like if you took a, a chocolate scoop of ice cream and then you pour more chocolate on top of the chocolate ice cream. <laughs> you put chocolate styrofoam <laughs> out of it. Yeah. Know, like, it's just, it's Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of Drag from the Left, a weekly digital series where we review RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13 from a radical leftist perspective. This is a pro-black podcast. This is a Black Trans Lives Matter podcast. This is a Down With The Cheeto podcast. And um, we are here to do what we do every week. If you are just now listening to us or discovering us for the first time, please take a moment to follow us online at Drag From The Left. That's D-R-A-G-F-T-L. D-R-A-G-F-T-O. Let's get into the episode. I am your hostess with the mostest, the very reverend doctor, Juanita Bindum. And this is Avery. My drag name this week is Proletariat. <laughs> proletariat, Proletariat. <laughs> so fancy. <laughs> um, and we are back, 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 back rows again. Um, this not is episode rows. 11. Not back rows. This is episode 11 of RuPaul's Drag Race. The title of this episode is Pop Goes the Cans. The girls um, will have to create and brand their own versions of an extravagant soft drink. But before we get into that, let's check the temperature in the workroom. Everybody is on their way back from the elimination that just happened a day prior. Denali is gone. Um, I think she really wanted to stay and um, show what she had to offer, but as Rue likes to say, it is not your time. And uh, I know sometimes we give you a hard bit over here at the Drag From The Left podcast, but we do want to congratulate you on your success on the show, and we wish you the best yes. in the future. Uh, I hope that you made her mark see on you the again show. on tour out there somewhere. I will come pay to see you on some ice skates, boo. <laughs> I most definitely will. Yes. So what I want to know is the girls are going through and they are hashing out, you know, how they always talk again about what we already done talked about again. Like, whatever. <laughs> but, like, we already had, right. we literally had a whole 30-minute special to, like, talk about what y'all already done talked about, but then you start the episode literally. talking about it again. But, mm-hmm. um, how do you really think Olivia feels to have pretty much the majority of the queens on the stage be like, look, it's you. <laughs> Um, I think Olivia has always known that the group doesn't think much of her in terms of being competition. Um, I don't know if you remember a few episodes ago, um, they were all talking about, you know, who's big competition, who's competition, and no one said Olivia, and Olivia really took that to heart, and she was like, I see that you guys don't view me as a big competition, and that actually happened again this episode. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself, but further down the episode, they were talking. I think it was an untucked actually. They were talking about like who's competition, who would they send home, and Olivia brought up again. I understand you guys don't see me as a big competition, so I think she's trying to do it gracefully in her Olivia Lux way. But I think she feels a way that the girls don't consider her big competition because in her mind, she is competition. Yeah, so, I think that becomes. I, I think I think she feels a way. I think she feels a way about that. She really wants to be liked and respected, um, as a drag queen. I think because she's so young in her drag career too, that she really wants to like prove herself. And the girls not consider her competition is probably a hit to that. Hmm. Yeah, um, you know, Candy was like, "I'm not buying it," but I do think. I think there's different type of people. I think there is a certain amount of that um, tinkering in the brain that Olivia is willing to show to the camera, to the other girls who have already, you know, like, this is a vulnerable moment for her. I think she probably just want to, like, finish sorting through those thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When they get back to the room, you know, later that evening or what have you, so that she could come back into the competition ready to compete. Because I do think Olivia wants to be there. 
And Olivia yeah. has had some very strong moments. Um, now, Absolutely. I do think Olivia could still have two wins. I'm not necessarily sure I would have given her those two wins back to back. I would have, going back in my head, I think I remember her being like my number two that week in her second one. But nonetheless, Olivia has been doing pretty well. Her looks mm-hmm. are cute, um, you know, and so... I think that when other people aren't seeing you as competition and the fact that like you only get critiques from the judges if everybody's on stage or you score high or you score low, it's a limited amount of time. They're only critiquing you through, you know, at that one point, you know what I'm saying? In the competition, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're looking for other forms of credible feedback to kind of see, you know, how, how you're doing, because like think on a television show like American Idol or the voice, right. These contestants, and this is happening like live, right? Those type of shows. Right. Uh, you get the critique from the judges. You see how well you did in the votes. <laughs> you know, literally right. that week. So you can kind of right. test that limits to the votes. There's also a live audience that you're typically mm-hmm. performing for. So you can feel what the audience is giving you. you and I also it. don't yeah. know if the rules about not having access to the internet are as rigorous. You know what I'm saying? Because I think... Yeah that there is a now of course there's potential for this to be negative but i do think that like if i was in a competition show and the people that was rooting for me like for example like if i was on a competition show in the city of cleveland and shaker highs like northeast ohio anytime somebody on a competition show don't nobody even got to know you everybody rooting for you right so like i could have a down week and people who have stakes in my life can know like look Juanita can turn this she not feeling good about herself you can go online and see those little messages and that could potentially change your trajectory because we know I mean there's scientific research about like like when somebody says hello to you and you smile it does all these positive things and endorphins in your brain and all whatever the science are behind that mm-hmm. I'm not a science you know brain chemistry yeah, yeah, person mm-hmm. that's not the type of doctor I am but um, <laughs> they uh <laughs> But we know that can have a positive effect. Now there's the other side where you can log on and you can hear everybody saying, you know, like uh, right. KYS, cop, KYS, KYS, and you like, uh, right. yikes, yikes. Um, yes. But you know, maybe if the if the if the production could like give them a printout of things that people are saying online, just like a one pager of like their top tweets of the night, or you know what I'm saying. Uh, mm-hmm. But the thing is, they, we don't see it while it's recording. So that is my other question to you. The format of RuPaul's Drag Race is forever evolving and forever changing. And I think for this to be, one, a reality TV show, but a competitive reality TV show, some of the most successful competitive reality TV shows were shot live or in proximity to live, where it's like it's recorded, like the episode is recorded the week before and then it comes out the following or like just by a day or two or even where they're delayed by 30 minutes. Because live TV usually isn't legitimately live. There is normally at least a few minutes buffer so that they have time to fix stuff. Yeah, um, clean something up if it if there needs to be. Or if you like Beyonce and you bring your own camera crew, they gotta have time to plug all their stuff in uh to do because you know <laughs> oh Beyonce perform you know like on award shows where like you know they're performing and they can't like how we view the performance at home is greatly mm-hmm. dictated upon how the camera crew is recording it and Beyonce right. the way her camera angles her live performances those are all choreographed and curated like she's been doing live tour DVD she's the queen of a live tour DVD I don't know anybody right. who's live tour DVD is on that level and trust the belief We're I've seen the bitch in concert one, the three times I've seen the bitch in concert three times so when I tell you that not being in person is a spiritual experience but when I tell you that the video mm-hmm. looks just as visually appealing for the audience as it is to see this in person, like at least the creative, right. that's because it's cur- It's not by happenstance. So she uses her own camera crew mm-hmm. so that when she performs on stage, y'all not gonna miss when she wanted to do this look into camera number three. No, she know right. because camera number You're three works for her, okay? They don't right. work for CBS. They don't work for ABC. <laughs> they work for Beyonce. They work for Beyonce. Right. But back to the question, do you think a competition television show like this could benefit from being recorded and presented to us live rather than, or not even, not all the way live, but in more close proximity to live. We're like, cause this is the episode that needs editing for like the confessionals and uh, what right, have right. you. But if there was a closer turnaround to the time where we see the show to when the girls are recording it, because this is sometimes like last all stars, it was almost a year. Yeah. Yeah. It was a while. I think, there's pros and cons to both, right? 
I think I would enjoy a live or, you know, one week delay of the episode being recorded and then being shopped out, right? Um, for me, it would be a little bit more authentic. Um, but, and it would help with the spoilers, I think. Yep. Um, there's so many Reddit threads and, and YouTube pages and Twitter threads about like the next week's lip sync song and who goes home and who who ranks well and who doesn't do that. I think yeah. if it was shot live or close proximity to live, it would reduce that. So it's more of a because a lot of people go into the season knowing knowing the elimination order, uh, knowing who makes the top. <laughs> so um, it could eradicate all that and then give it more of a. Bing boom pow! I don't know the intellectual. A realistic <laughs> viewing experience for the audience. It's like a more yes. authentic way of watching television, right? Which is why they wouldn't do it, um, because they lose control over, over the out, narrative. Yes, you can edit out some of that authenticity, and then you can manipulate the audience, like we talked about a few weeks ago, um, which Drag Race is notorious for. Um, this is a competition show but it's not competition-based, if that makes sense. Um, Mm -hmm. It's reality-based. It's based on making good television. And we will see get to the end of this damn episode. (laughs) Right, right. It is The the focus is not about who is doing the best and who deserves, in air quotes, to win. It's about how can we make the best television? Where's the next award coming from? Where's the next ad dollars coming from? Um, And I think that's a big reason why it is shot and filmed and edited and released in the order and the fashion that it is. I, I, the people I in Drag Race aren't stupid. The people in Drag Race are not stupid. They know it works for them. They know it gets the money, knows it gets the rewards, and they're going to keep doing that, and they're just going to amp it and amp it and amp it up more and more. Um, so, why <laughs> it might not be for the view, it might not be the best viewing experience, or politically it might not be um, the most moral or integral thing to do. Um, they know what makes the money, and they're going to keep doing that. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> I think you know what you're talking about, Professor. Mm-hmm. I think you know. <laughs> All right. They need to give you tenure. They need to go ahead and give you tenure. <laughs> they going to um, do that. The white people never. <laughs> they're not ready. They're not ready. <laughs> they're um, not ready. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree. So... Uh, I don't know if this is in order or not, but I'm just going to go to it. The The ladies mm-hmm. get another guest. There's a guest. There's a guest. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited My about fame. it. Yeah. Like, oh, I love me some Jenna Essence Hall. The reigning, she look? the reigning champion. Our crowned Baby. Our queen. The Jada had one of the Had one of the most the polished and distinguished runs on Drag Race I have ever seen. The trajectory. Girl. <laughs> and when she came back, I don't know. I don't know. There was something really endearing about her guest appearance. You can just see the girls from her being a competitor on the show to her winning and then giving advice to the current competitors. I mean, this is such a genuine moment. I feel like everything Jada Hessens Hall does is genuine and heartfelt. She does. I don't think she half steps anything, which is why I appreciate her as a queen so much. Like, she literally came and she was like, one of y'all is going to be the winner. Soak that you're in. You're in the sometimes room. I, one of y'all in this room is going to be the winner. I think sometimes in competition shows like that, they forget that. Like, yeah. Because they're so caught up in the competition and they're so in their head. And uh, like Bob and Monet say when, they're, when they were talking about Drag Race, like they think everyone's out to get them. I think sometimes they lose sight of one of us is going to win. Yeah. <laughs> and they are like towards the end now. So I think when Jenny said that, all of them are like, well, bitch, one of us is going to win. <laughs> right? Yeah, the she gave winner really is in the room. Genuine advice. Yes, they, she gave him real genuine advice. That was a good talk. I think especially at this point in the competition, they all needed to hear those words. Absolutely. And this is when I, these are the moments of the show that I really enjoy. And I do not credit uh, Wild Presents and RuPaul for this moment. The contestants of this show are the spirit and lifeblood of this television, of this television yes. franchise, of this empire. That is why we watch. And yeah. they are literally why we watch. Jada literally just came back and gave a genuine, honest, uh, uh, 
just testimony really about their experience and they, and mm-hmm. sharing what they had to offer. They didn't try to create nothing new. They didn't try to come up with this grandiose. They were just straight up and honest about mm-hmm. their experience. Like when I was there, this is what I was thinking. And when I realized, like somebody asked, it was Tina, I think. Tina said, was there a point in the competition? When did you realize that you were going to win? Like that you, that this was for you. Yeah. She's like, wait, 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 wait. I thought that <laughs> when I got here. Because right. I came, this is what I came to do. Now, the things that yes. happen along the way, yes, you see that other queens are good. You see that the judges like this and they don't like that. But you have right. to come in there with the mindset that the crown is already yours. It's all that's, yeah. that's kind of that's a little biblical moment. Hey, boy, shot down. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> uh, you know what is for you is for you. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And can't nobody, exactly. not nobody, man made. Can't nobody them take it away. You know what I'm saying? Come on. I was um, watching um Aquarius episode of Work the World on Wild Prisons Plus. Um, you and Sharon the Needles. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Um, Sharon Needles said that um, she Aquaria always knew that Aquaria was going to win when she got on Drag Race. She knew she was going to be on Drag Race one, and she knew once she got on, she was going to win. Um, I think that's the mentality you have to have in this kind of competition. And if you look at the past winners in their season. Most of them knew they were going to win. Bob walked into that room and said, this competition is mine. She didn't say it out of yep. her mouth, but her whole aura, her demeanor, the way she conducted herself throughout her season, she knew she was winning. Raja knew she was winning. Yeah. <laughs> um, Evie Ali, she knew that she was strong competition. I don't know if she always knew that she was going to win, but she always put her best foot forward. Mm-hmm. Um, BB knew she was winning. Alaska and All Stars Two knew she was winning. There was no right. choice for Alaska. She was about to. She was about to hurt people. She, was like, <laughs> she said. She said, "I will pay you. I will demo you this money." If I can. <laughs> the Vivian okay. on uh, UK season one knew she was winning. Right, you yeah. have to have that mentality. If you don't, you are dead in the water before you even start. Oh uh, God, and. I mean, I know we're supposed to be talking about the other girls, but I mean, Jada is really the fucking shit. Like, this bitch came in this competition, <laughs> was absolutely stunning, makes her own clothes. Like, makes her own gone, shit. Gone through the whole drag trajectory. She has a partner mm-hmm. who supports her career and her drag that is literally making uh, her wheel, A black her partner. Jewelry. A black partner who a, loves a black her dolls, partner. Down boots, dolls, boots, okay? <laughs> Threw this bitch a parade. This bitch went outside to a parade. A parade because she won during the pandemic. Let's not forget, she won during the pandemic, so she didn't have a I'm normal to, uh, reign. I'm close to this mic, um, Benji. Are you listening? If you're listening, um, uh, Jada's partner, <laughs> Jada's partner threw them a parade. Take note, Juanita. Juanita likes parades. <laughs> I, think, I think parades is is very nice. We that was so heartwarming. <laughs> and since we're on the topic, I'm not going to be on this long. That so that episode when Jada was talking about her boyfriend, um, and before we saw the picture, we was like, Oh, here it comes again, another drag queen talking about her white partner, another black drag queen talking about her white partner, right? And then a picture showed and he was black. Baby, Goop. I was inundated. I was inundated Goop. with text messages, all caps, like all of my black queer friends that watch Drag Race were like, Jada has a black boyfriend, right? Which, one was fun and it was nice to see, but honestly, that is so sad and disheartening that we are so excited to see a black drag queen on RuPaul's Drag Race have a black partner because all of them do not. <laughs> Look, if you are they a black even, queen on RuPaul's they don't Drag even Race black. and you have a they partner, they're black. white. They don't even they have don't black friends. Black. They don't have black friends. They don't have they black don't, friends. Even, you know, I want it too. <laughs> I, when we talked about this. I want to get into it because, like, House of Avalon, uh, Simone yeah. the only one that's ebony. Yeah. Yeah. You Everyone know? else is lily white. And, as a freshly fallen snow. <laughs> Let me say it. <laughs> Every time you say it. Every time you say it. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and I actually that is a sad conundrum to have all of these black queers texting each other like either inundated in surprise or like emotional response, emotional response to see a black person in relationship or uh, mm -hmm. proximity romantically, even friendship wise, because we all know desirability play the same, if not more, in your in yeah. your thing. Yeah, than, uh, than a partner because people won't be friends with yeah. you because they don't think you because they wouldn't fuck you. They wouldn't be. They won't be your friend, especially in the queer communities. Okay. Yep. Now tell me what logic in that world, which world that makes it, and it's so funny because this is the same community we are a part of who then says things like, "Can nobody be friends? Everybody always trying to do it." Well, you make your decision on. On based on your friendship, rather you go do it or not. So why would doing it not being a part of it? Like, I, come uh, on, like the conundrum here, <laughs> right? You know, as, as we've seen, well, if they demonstrated with Candy Muse that mathematics are may not be the strong suit for gay people. <laughs> maybe gay people, or maybe gay people are not good at math, or I might say. Okay, now tell me what you think, because now you could just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Is your call out, call in, call out really robust? Because mine is not. Because if not, we can just mine incorporate isn't. it into this episode. Mine was, mine is going to be actually really quick and actually has nothing to do with this week's episode. It's Great. more of the franchise as a whole. Mine has something to do with this episode. So since we're talking about us not being able to do mathematics, uh, I'm going to tell you around, <laughs> uh, an, an, an arrhythmic, uh, arrhythmia ticks and whatever. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> so... Candy Muse during this little break. Now, mind y'all, y'all, this is where we had. Be with us on the on the journey. Be with us on the journey. We mm -hmm. are still, we are right before the mini challenges announced that Rue coming to the workroom. This is where I'm at in my timeline, in my long periodically mind. That's where I'm at. Explain so, it for the people. <laughs> okay, so this is where we are. So Candy makes this thing like, well, you know what, Tina, it's okay. It's whatever, girl, because you won that mini challenge last week. So you got $25,000. And people for a second was like, go let it pass. And it was like, wait a minute. Don't you mean 2500 And the main reason I think they corrected her is because, like, we all want 25000 baby. Like, because they, 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 right. they, they want to double They were like, that's a lot of money. So we get, how much do we get? Oh, okay. No, 2500 And Candy's literally like, I know, 2500 That is $25,000, girl. And I'm just like, oh, Candy. <laughs> but be. then what happens is they, like, making the joke, they're making the joke, they're making the joke. Bam. Now we in mini challenge world. We're going to take a mm -hmm. small little pause, a little break around this little microphone here. I'm going to go around it. I do mm -hmm. like the mini challenge because this is fun. Okay? Yes, I, like I love Drag Race trivia. I love me yes. some trivia. Uh, drag mm -hmm. Race is... Uh, yeah, I love me some Drag Race trivia. But... um. So they're doing these trivia questions, right, which is supposed to take some intelligence and whatnot, and Candy yeah. is killing the questions history. left and right. Bam, she know the answer. She know the answer. She know the answer. They even gave the bitch the question, like, was there a uh, untucked on season one? And she like, well, if I'm going to be honest as I'm going to be, the answer is no. But all <laughs> of the back conversation came out a couple of weeks after it aired, and I was like, you better know the answer. But mm -hmm. then they got to the end and they asked him to do some math. Okay. Right. And then the dun dun dun, the sound effects come in. <laughs> and of course, Candy gets the answer right. So the winner of this week's mini challenge is Candy Muse. She wins $25,000. <laughs> 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 it is $2,500 to JJ Mallory. 2500 baby. Now, this yes. is what I'm going to say. I think there is a certain level of, of playing fun and kiki ha ha girl. But then again, right. we got this. Now we're going on this narrative, right? That we have somebody who is a person of color, you know, uh, black, Latino, mm -hmm. uh, Latinx, black, Latinx, to get right. We got this fat person, we got this queer person, right? We're going now. Now, y'all know the direction where I'm about to take y'all, right? And then we want to play yeah. this narrative like that. Somehow, that is the equivalent of dumb, stupid, uh, you know, uh, lower IQ. And this is also yeah. a person who not doesn't only speak English and does have a uh, a speech uh, a, like some difficulties yeah. with their speech, right? So mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is like again, it's like kind of in that same thing where we've been like kind of making a butt joke, uh, candy all season in the fandom on the show. You know what I'm saying? Just about mm -hmm. kind of their ability, their wherewithal with their mental capacity and i think it's kind of fucked you know i do think that's kind of yeah fucked. and you can tell i don't know if you caught it at the very end when tina said let's hope it's not a math problem you can tell her feelings was like kind of hurt by that um she snapped yeah. out of it real quick 
Because but, she was, she she knew she was winning, and she like fuck this bitch, whatever I'm gonna do me because I'm Candy Muse. But like those yeah. are, those are those are these things like people like to name them microaggressions. I don't believe in microaggression. It's aggression, aggression. It is what it is. But mm-hmm. these are those these are those moments. And I think what happens is that we just don't be thinking. I think sometimes that we just be like ha 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 fun. Like these are the normal jokes that are in the canon, right? Like if you dark skin, right. you know that there's these certain jokes that go with that. If you fat, there's jokes mm-hmm. that go with that. If you this, there's jokes that go with that. And when we're in community with our friends or whatever. Some Sometimes we'll be just doing that, you know, like doing the dozens or whatever. But I think we need to like mm-hmm. sometimes like stop and think a step further and just really be like, what are the additional implications for what I'm saying? Does this impact mm-hmm. this person as lighthearted as I may be saying it? Do they is, or do they live experiences change the way? in which what I'm saying is going to impact them. Exactly. And that's the real true statement. The statement is like, once you add their feelings onto what you said, that's the actual mm-hmm. outcome. It's not just what you the intent on what you said. You got to mix it all together. Okay, you got to do yeah, you you gotta Miley Cyrus. It's, 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 it's this joke at the expense of their identity. I guess yeah. like so I think that um, I think that is a moment to to think about and that is yeah. pretty much my call and call out for the week but shout out to Candy for winning the mini challenge yes speaking on the mini challenge just really quickly um this is not a call in this is actually something really soft and probably uh, unnecessary and a little nitpicky um but I didn't like the gender essentialist understanding of the mini challenge like this is so basic, even a pit crew member would know it, meaning that this is a masculine, masculine prison person, red as male, and yeah. men are into Dumb cute boy. So, Dumb cute boy. So, yeah. So I was like, eh, but I get it. Like, it's not that big a deal. It's just like, I don't, I don't know if I like this junk position. But, right, but then we want to ask them, right, to get along with the movement, to know, to to treat people right, and do all this other stuff. But now we just talking about they 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 cute and and dumb and like I just. Right. And then I also think it's a bit of a slight for other individuals that are actually living with different exceptionalities that have to do with IQ. Like I am friends with individuals who are neurodivergent in a lot of different ways, and some in which it affects their intellect and like. It is what it is. That's just how they exist in the you know what I'm saying. That's how they exist in the world, mm-hmm. uh, or mm-hmm. whatever. And there are people who actually like we make it like ha 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 dumb, but there's actually people who may have like some 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 difficulties, like actually keeping up with you know certain things and and working on those uh, or whatever. And I, it kind of I don't know. It's it's some ableism in there. There's some racism. It's just a lot of isms mi- mixed up into. There's a lot like of isms. Yes. Okay. <laughs> mixed up in jokes like that. But shout out to you, Mama, for your twenty five hundred dollars to JJ Malibu. I love to see you model some them underpants candy because we like them thick over here okay <laughs> uh, let me see what some of these under- speaking of which oh god they should give us a sponsorship girl you heard of this new underwear brand i hope the person not problematic the new ones car- is that car- 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 Girl, they don't got my shade uh, well, they didn't have shade. okay, so I got this shade now. In case people don't know what we look like, Avery, I'm like really, really chocolate, and Avery is like even more chocolate than me. And so, I'm a we deep, on the dark we, we yeah. like these <laughs> deep, dark, you know, complected human beings, like heavily yes. melanated. So, like, if yes. like it would kind of me and Avery is like if you took a, a chocolate scoop of ice cream and then you pour more chocolate on top of the chocolate ice cream. <laughs> you put chocolate syrup on top of it. Yeah. Like, it <laughs> but they got these little flesh tone for actual dark people underpants. Like they didn't have the one darker than this, but this one I think goes pretty good with my skin tone. Yeah. Now what I did was yeah, I ordered this. It's gonna be cute. Now I ordered a I ordered a G string and I ordered a uh and a jock strap. Now the jock strap I ordered in size large, it's the right size, it fit right. But this one, I must okay. have accidentally pressed the small button, even though I swear I pressed the large button. Cause I put this thing Ooh. on, I was like, I can't get in here. What's going on? So now I look at the tag. That's the thong like, too. That's uncomfortable. And- a whole S for small. So I got to look up to see what the return policy is. Because they might even let me return these girls. Because these underwear. Yeah, that's know. underwear. They're not going to let you return that. So I might just have to put this on Facebook and be like, who knew, who want a brown? Who, I don't even know no brown, skinny, small people that could fit in Yeah, here. I don't know anyone who wears a small. <laughs> I don't even know nobody. And my, the only person I know that's so small is my little brother. And I don't think he wear underwear like this. He might. I don't know the straight. Put him on to something new. Yeah, put the baby on the sun. Not on the podcast. Not on the podcast. <laughs> no. I'm calling him so, a baby. He is a he is a full grown man. He's a younger dog. Ain't he though? It's, it's, it freaks me out <laughs> because it just it means that I'm getting old. Uh, let's take a quick break. Ain't nothing wrong with you. 
<laughs> Let's take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsor. And we're back, 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 back rolls again. It's your girl, the very mm-hmm. Reverend Dr. Juanita Bindum. And this is Avery. My drag name this week is Broletariat. And I'm very proud of that drag name, in. by the way. It's a good one. Like, let me get back to the script, though. Um, <laughs> you are tuning in live, if you're listening to it right now, to Drag from the Left, your weekly digital series where we review RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13 from a radical leftist perspective. Let's get back into it. So, uh, mini challenge, done. We done talked about how they could be ableist. That, done. We done talked about the beautiful <laughs> Jada Essence Hall. Done. So now it's time for the m- 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 maxi challenge. And for the maxi challenge this week, the girls are assigned to create and brand their own version of an extravagant soft drink, or as we like to call it, pop. Um, the <laughs> branding challenge uh, happens. Uh, it doesn't happen every season. I don't know if they like on a every other season kind of rotation with it. Like sometimes it happens, yeah. sometimes it doesn't. Some people say that it's an odd season thing or I don't mm-hmm. know, but they're doing sense. it this time around. And so yeah. the girls have to, like, when we say Brandon Challenge, this mean they got to come up with their own type of pop. They need to tell me what it do, what the flavors is. They got to design the can. They got to produce the commercial. They got to act and write in the commercial. And they got to do a little yes. jingle, a little jingle. So going into this challenge right away, who are you thinking is going to come out on top and who's going to come out in the bottom? First of all, this reminded me of Jamie Foxx. Uh, when he worked the Jimmy Fox show, I should say, when he when he had to write those jingles, and yeah, then he yeah, go off about playing right rice. <laughs> one of my favorite episodes. But anyway, they need um, to put that one on Netflix too. They need to add that into the Black series. Don't they? I would rewatch. I would don't rewatch they? that one because Fancy was cute. That Jimmy Fox show is so slept on. When we it talk about '90s show. sitcoms, it was a good. It show. is one of the best. It ranks at the top for me. And he and there used were to be singing down on that show. And there were a lot of, uh, like, the yes. red pants were darker. I really appreciate it. I saw a lot of different uh, representations of, like, shade, age, body type on this show. Yep. And then Jimmy Fox was Before so it's time. Cute. Wasn't he a cutie? He used to sing down. His voice House is heavenly. Down. Ugh. But, okay. Anyway. Um, so, I actually thought God Mick was going to do well. <laughs> Yeah. I thought God Mick was going to do well. I thought Rose was going to do well. Um, this seems right up Rose's alley. I actually thought Tina Burner was going to do, do well too. Um, my judgment was off <laughs> this week. <laughs> As we will get into. <laughs> right. Um, but I thought those three were going to do well and it, it didn't really turn out that way, not all the way. <laughs> Who did yeah, you think was so... going to struggle or do well? Well, they start to give us an inkling that Mick might struggle because, like, Mick is talking to Candy and the girls about, like, their concept and their idea. And, like, Candy straight up told Mick, like, I get what you're doing, but you're doing a lot to get to that point. Like, you need to just hit them. Like, it's a little commercial. Mm-hmm. It's Drag Race, girl. You need to hit them with it, hit them quick and keep it moving. Yeah. Like, yeah. tell them what it is, do the joke, fall on the floor, be funny, end. Like, and I think that she should have listened to her homegirl Candy and really just that's, thought about how she was getting point A to point B. That's the thing about capitalism, though. It makes you reduce. <laughs> yeah. It makes you. It makes you simplify very complex things, <laughs> right? Branding, branding, and trying to sell a product is not an easy task. Right. <laughs> like it's not. A, it's not a forty-five second thing. Um, but the, the lore of white supremacy, the myth of white supremacy, makes you reduce and reduct very complicated things, uh, uh-huh. which is what we see with like Mick. I think Utica too. They want to have these fully flushed out, full narratives. A um, whole campaign. It's a campaign. A whole it's campaign. A single commercial. But but white supremacist capitalism doesn't allow you to be thoughtful. <laughs> it doesn't allow you to tell a narrative. It doesn't allow you to be full and to be whole. It just takes pieces. They don't want you to think for more than a few seconds because then you cannot identify <laughs> right. them. They don't, they want you to... Exactly. Exactly. Uh, quick sidebar. There was recently an article that came out about this in the music industry. So, like, we get this general conversation in the canon that the girls can't do it like they used to. And I think sometimes there is truth to this and there's also, like, myth to it. It's like you're not looking in the right places. There's, you know, you, yeah. like, if you, if you, you, depending on what you use to listen to music and how you use to digest that, there is lots of stuff out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, 
And then we have somebody like Hitchnada who just like won a Grammy, which is like completely blew my mind. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, that the girls don't do it like they used to, like they don't have time to sing house down on a track. Well, you have to think about it though. Like we are in the era of streaming and the algorithm, right? And yeah. even on a on an app like Spotify, you can't just make good music. You need to make music that catches the algorithm to tells the uh the app to tell the listener to listen to your music, because we're not in the right. era of like where you get a TV commercial about a new album dropping. Artists don't even do the talk show tour pretty much anymore like they used to. Nope. So you find out about drops through social media and through the apps that we listen to the music on. Yes. So girls are doing these shorter songs, these quick bops, because that's what mm-hmm. the structure, the financial structure and the of, of like how we stream music is really set up. You can't mm-hmm. do... Like you can't really do the Whitney Houston and the Mariah Carey and the and the how Beyonce used to sing House Down back on album one, two, and three. Like you cannot mm-hmm. do that on a track that's two minutes and thirty seven seconds long. It's not how the voice the vocal instrument works. Like if you go on a track going in from the start, like nobody's gonna want to listen to it. You gotta like start mm-hmm. and then go off. Well, it don't leave them that extra ninety seconds to go off. So yeah. the girls do make the whisper hush hush in your feelings music because it, it fit better with the time the frame. You know the vibe. Girl, I don't I'm know so the, vibe the vibe is. I don't know what that I'm is. I'm so sick of vibes. I'm I, vibes. To quote to quote the late great Whitney Houston, I listen to singers. Okay. I really I very real listen to people who cannot sing. Who cannot but we sing. are in the age we are in the age of TikTok. <laughs> we are in the again going back to my original point. Cap, capitalism does not allow you to tell a narrative, not a fully fleshed out one, not an intelligent one. I was I made this comment about um, Ariana Grande's what was that album she just released? The, the, the deluxe album album of okay. positions. I think was and I was like I love these added tracks, but they are so short. Like main thing is like two and a half minutes long. Where yep. is the and that's a good ass song. Where is the rest of it? <laughs> like, yep. Where is the rest? And I'm like, I'm, and I, and I tweeted this. I was like, I know there are industry um, explanations for this. I'm sure it is rooted in some form of capitalism, of some yeah. form of like expectation of or some bullshit. But I want the full song. Give me four minutes. Where is the Please. rest? <laughs> four minutes and seventeen seconds. Because I just want to hear a couple of ad libs extra. You know, like I want to. I want to hear a bridge. I want to hear a breakdown. I want to hear a hook. Pause. The Where bridge? are they? What's a bridge? They don't even do those <laughs> anymore. I don't. I have not heard a song with a legitimate, a legitimate bridge in forever. Okay. Where These are songs? Go hook, verse, chorus, hook over. And when I tell you, the hook, it'd be the most. <laughs> and most of it is hook, 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 hook. Oh, it'd be. Oh, they love a hook, hook, hook. A hook, a verse, hook, hook, hook. Sometimes these songs don't have choruses. It's a pre-chorus. It's not even a chorus. It's a pre-chorus. Okay. I blame you. I'm like, who is teaching the girls songwriting? <laughs> I am. Songs used to have nobody. Hook, That's the problem. Three verses, a hook, three verses. Every chorus had a little bit of a change on it, a full mm-hmm. bridge, and a vamp at the end, and a vamp. They don't even know what it is. That's how you do a song. That's they don't even know that. That's how you tell a story through a song, right? Three they can't even do three verses if they try. They could not even do three verses if they try. B Beyonce's B Day, as much as we give it for it, the Bops. The greatest pop album of all time. And it was Bops back to back to back. She was able to do that though, because of the bridges and the vamps. Every breakdown. Elevated the song and took it to a new place. And that's when she really did her singing too. The bridge on Freedom Dress, the bridge bridge on Green Light, (laughs) down. (laughs) That's where Mama brought it home. That's where she brought it home. Like, we don't do that no more. This this is a, (laughs) I'm sorry, y'all. This is a podcast about drag race. We promise, but like, I had to take this moment. (laughs) So anyway, because capitalism ruins everything. God make us confused. Yes. And I mean, it's mm-hmm. one brand because the name of their drink is about being delusional. And, um, <laughs> and you know, whatnot. Now, um, so we in the rehearsals or whatever, and we watching the girls do what they do. So we just go briefly talk right. about the rehearsal experience. Um, okay. So they had to deal with both of the homosexuals. 
They had both of them. <laughs> now, for me, it would either be Ross or Carson. Because when I showed up to set, I'm going to be like, one of y'all got to go. Both of them together is a lot. <laughs> I cannot do them together. Because Ross is palatable. I can do Ross. But when Ross, I can do Ross. Ross and Ross get bad, Ross be acting up. And I'm like, look, don't start acting like the other one. I don't got time. Listen, cause I'm already about two seconds off of Carson's ass, so I can, I can add Girl, an ass whooping hate, to this is, is list if you want me to. Am I holding up gang signs? These gang signs? Like, I actually okay, don't man. mind Ross most of the time. Carson, oh, and I, Carson up is, until this season, I didn't mind Carson that much either. He wasn't my, I always preferred Ross. But this season, he is like on one. I don't know if it's the the the, the quarantine or I don't know if the pandemic is getting to him. But mama is getting a little, a little nasty to the girls. <laughs> yeah. Turning into uh, Santino a little bit. <laughs> we okay. <don't... laughs> I also think, too, like, and I wonder, and I hope this don't come off ages, but I think as people get old, they don't even be thinking about their filters and stuff no more. And sometimes they just be saying shit. Like, when they can normally behave, mm-hmm. they be reverting into that other they self. They choose like, violence. We all got, that, <laughs> right, we all got that, that other self, that one that's kind of got, like, they could probably go on for an hour and a half straight saying nothing but things problematic. Uh, right. like I think they be reverting to that side a little bit because they just be like mm-hmm. right, whatever like um yeah but I will say during the commercial recording time I when I saw Candy uh what's the case special I was into Candy's little leopard print outfit uh, it was cute some people do say that they wish these queens would like wear boobs and corsets one I don't think Candy needs to wear boobs I think it works for the I think the proportion works just fine I think with the boob it would Candy has boobs she doesn't need to wear boobs um I do think I, a lot of the girls don't wear corsets no more Denali don't be wearing no corset uh, uh I just caught her a couple times without no corset on they love to be square in the middle but this is the thing though the <laughs> art of female illusion is shifting and I know a lot of girls that's built like that you know and you corsets know, are uncomfortable think, but Let's just call thing a thing. It's the They're uncomfortable. But it's part of the show, though. <laughs> like, it's supposed to be a heightened performance, right, of gender. Yeah. So everything's supposed to be bigger or smaller or taller or shorter. Like, it's all got to yeah. be more. You're not allowed to just be beautiful. You have to be drop dead gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the, it's the show. Business. It's the yeah. show. So I was like, okay, girl, slap a corset on it. And then, honestly, it's the TV show. Like, you know that's the canon of the TV show. I don't know why these bitches don't be about to pass out. I would just have it on all the time. I just would never take it off. Yeah, because you're going to catch me on camera looking crazy. Look, <laughs> and I would say this, and this is not about, I'm not saying this because Candy Fat. I don't give a damn. You could be as big as a huge or little. You got to, you got to, it's drag. You got to cut that waist in. You got, you got to. You, you, Prime example. Our new UK winner, Lawrence Cheney. No tie to no tie to Congratulations. Pen, no tie to suck it in. Mama knows how body. to wear a body. Body. She knows how to put body on her. She knows well, how to it, manipulate her body in the said, perfect it was way. Sad. She said, she's like, I don't feel comfortable getting out of drag in front of y'all because when I'm in drag, I'm sick of it. I'm yeah. being honest, girl. I would have probably been like, look, when I'm in drag, I'm a whole nother type of corset, okay? Lauren Listen. is, that is, <laughs> god damn. Talk about a break out, yeah. okay? When you come Lauren, on, you, you can see Lauren's ass <laughs> from the front, okay? Lauren do not play I love asses in drag. like that. I love a booty. I love like asses. That. When I can tell you got a fat ass from looking at looking at from the front, oh, I like this person. Okay. What's your number? Shout out to Lawrence for being the first fat winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. I am so happy for you. And, and all the seasons and all the countries that it's in, we finally have a. <laughs> we, we finally, finally got a, a fat, fat person to win. Like you would And it is so well hard. deserved. It is well deserved because Lawrence Cheney ate that competition. Oh, ate it up, ate it up. Now I'm gonna tell you what, Bimini. We 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 with you, Bimini. We love us some Bimini. Okay. That the was Boo the Rash. best coming of age. That was the, the best Rash. kind of. Okay. Started for literally started from the bottom and, and the made bottom. it to the count them. That is how you do it. I love the Four. girls because at first I wasn't standing for her, and every episode I was just like, This is a bad bitch. When this bitch said, Unleash the beast, Bimini, I was like, Absolutely <laughs> okay, gender bender, system offender. Okay, yes, rough, she does it. Tender, I was like, This bitch got bored. Yeah, <laughs> and since we're talking about bars in UK season two, my future husband Taste. Taste. Girl, I'll move to Wales. That bitch ate Did... her verse up. 
come into the room. Ajax Corey, uh, action. She said, action. she said, I might struggle on the acting challenges. I might struggle over here, but I'm a performer. I know okay. I do this. <laughs> and she ate. She didn't even know she was in the bottom four times, so she wasn't going to win. But she still ate. When she say, uh, when she, <laughs> and I love when she said it to Benji, be like, um, and I sent her home to sing in memory. I was like, yes, bitch. <laughs> I, what a, what a I loved you did, it. You did send that bitch home to in memory. She had to say it. Too. And that was, since we're talking about it, that was one of the best lip syncs on that damn franchise. That, when they were when when they were crying, I was crying. That is a performance. Stared, glared into the camera the entire time, looking like that the is most how you beautiful, alien esque beauty I have ever seen in my entire life. Gorgeous. Like, hey, how do you have a face like that? Like, where that do perfect. they sell them? <laughs> where do you get them? I would like to know that. Because I want one. Same. That was like, an can amazing I get that performance. In dark brown? Does that come in shade dark brown? Okay, does that okay? <laughs> does that come in dark deep brown dark and bearded? <laughs> okay, does that come in deep? I would like that in what's my Fenty shade? 480? I would like my okay, whatever the shade is, I want it in that shade. Oh, oh she is gorgeous. In and out no, of drag. Got, Call me, off, please. We done got off and we gotta get back on. Get back on schedule. Okay, so the girls okay, are rehearsing their, their pop commercials, okay? So mm. I'm gonna be honest, we're gonna move on from this talking about rehearsal because rehearsal was a like a pretty much they was being. I thought that um, Carson and uh, uh, and Ross were being, you know, extra make extra sauce during the mm-hmm. rehearsal time. Uh, they was not buying. They, they was not buying what Utica was selling. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is when they're trying to set up the Tina Burner sucks narrative, which I do not agree with. But we will talk about that when we get to the runway. Um, mm-hmm. and God, Mick was having such a hard time. They were like, it's not making sense in my head the way, like, I, I don't know. It's not translated. Yeah. And, and, the, and they were confused too. They was like, what's going on here? But I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Mick was also confused. Like I think they knew what they wanted to do, but they didn't know how to do it. You know? It, it, because, it didn't translate well, you know. Well, I'm gonna tell y'all why, because a lot of people is confused on what got mixed, got sex, sex juice does, and I'm gonna tell you what it do. So I, the, I got it. I got it's it. It's supposed to make you feel delusionally sickening, even when you're not. So what's pretty much when you right. drink the drink, you're still a hot ass mess, but you believe. But otherwise. in your mind. And it's yes. hard to convey that type of irony in the if you're not a legitimate like screenplay writer and you only got 45 seconds to tell that story. Yeah. What she had needed to have done was she could have did everything that she had had done, but she needed it not just for her to believe that she was hot even though she looked a mess. She needed other people to believe that she was hot even though she looked a mess right. too. So the and fact that the pit crew part. still thought that she looked a mess afterwards. That's where it fell. If the pit crew had been enamored by her, like almost completely ogling and obsessed with her afterwards, even mm-hmm. though she was still farting and falling down, it would have worked. She wouldn't have had to change the look. She wouldn't have had to, literally, I would have done the, I wouldn't even recorded extra takes. I would have told them like the same takes I did for the first set, just use those literally exact same ones again. Yeah. And it yeah, and they were saying like, they were saying <laughs> that it wasn't a great enough junk to position um, she just after she drank the juice, she did the same thing. I was like that was the point. <laughs> like the point right. was that she is still a hot ass mess after she drank the drink. What happened was like I like I said, it didn't land well, it didn't translate well. But I knew what the story was. She just didn't execute it as accurately as she could have. Um, but it made sense. They were saying it didn't make sense. It made sense. It just wasn't all the way together. Right. And, you know, Rue don't seem to be saying much comments on the judging board, but Rue did end up saying, like, uh, they just was like, listen here, honey, irony is hard to explain. Uh, like, it just, you know, and yeah. that's pretty much what it was. Like, you can't go that, it's hard to go that cerebral with it when you only got this little bit, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Now, let me tell you, this is the episode where we know for a fact that Simone is the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race season 13. When she went on the set, after the first line she gave, Carson and Ross turned to each other and said, she's one of those girls. She's so she good. just has it. She's so good. She could do anything. <laughs> she could just do anything. And she did everything. Like, she's... They're, they're in... Like, when I watch the pit stop and Ben De La Creme, Ben De La Christ, everybody can feel however they want about Ben De La Creme, but Ben De La Creme <laughs> showed up to All Stars and won every single challenge until she eliminated herself. Yeah. 
That bitch knows how to do drag race. She She won All Stars. She won. Okay. Yeah. She also didn't do bad on her original season. Right. She did a good job. They didn't like her old style of drag, which like they'll always find something to say. You're too sexy. You ain't sexy enough. Like whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. which we'll talk about when we get to Tina. Um, <laughs> but even then, she's like Simone, Simone. Like everybody, can nobody just stop saying it? Now I know. Now Simone done won four challenges. Now we mm-hmm. know that winning four don't necessarily mean you go win. Very few people have won four challenges, and the only person yeah. to win four challenges and then turn around and win the season is Sharon Needles. Sharon the girls Needles. who win four no. challenges lose. Shay they Kulay, make it to the end, lost. But they don't win. Gigi yeah. Good lost. Bimini Bamboulash. No. Lost. Mm-hmm. They now, come I think very close might, to the crown, but don't I think like this it. might be time for the girl who went four to win. I think it's time. I, think I it's mean, time. this is a talented group of queens, right? We all know that. We have said it time and time again. This is a very diverse, and not just about race and gender, and diverse in terms of creativity, in terms of creative thought, um, in terms of their approach to drag. Um, very diverse and talented range of queens. But Simone is the clear standout. At least for me. I know I'm biased because she's been my favorite since the beginning. But She's just on another level. The clear front runner. Like, no one is bringing it. I've said this before. No one is bringing it like Simone. No. no it says a lot it. because these are all great queens. <sighs> except for one who I don't really care for too much. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> these are all wonderful queens. Home. They really could have left her at home. That's the only one. I, 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 I like. They could have left her at home. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So we yeah, she's the, she has to be the winner. Season. She has to be, and, and and this is the moment. Now I will tell you what her bottom was a double save. So I do feel like, and she don't won four challenges. So it's highly unlikely that she'll win a fifth besides the title, which doesn't typically get counted in the wins or as whatever. Win. Right. Although I think that should count as a win, but whatever. Uh, it's like the <laughs> you want it's the like show. the yeah. win. Um, but um, she's won four, so it's highly unlikely that she'll win any more. But look, we're down to six queens. So what? That's mm-hmm. two more episodes into the finale. It's supposed to be yeah. a sixteen episode season. So if this is episode twelve, like this is uh episode eleven of elimination of like girls but this was episode 12 so next mm-hmm. episode would be 13 and that'd be five then the next one would be 15 and that'd be four um and then so they do 16 and then it'll be a finale so this is about yeah. we're getting to the end now this is what happens yeah it moves so slow and then it's gone um yep and it's mostly because we have a top four instead of a top two or a top three. Like Top three, yeah. Uh, now, I know for a fact the girls are going back for the finale because Utica and Simone will did a... Uh, in Simone's YouTube video, because you know, she do a YouTube video every week for the look that she did on the runway yeah. the week before. Yeah. So in her in the twin episode, she wasn't able to get with Utica to do the photo shoot, so she did the photo shoot with Shea Coulee, which was uh, mm-hmm. sickening, um, because Shea Coulee... Um, mm-hmm. uh, Shea Coulee, Shea Coulee... Um, so, but her and some uh, Utica was talking. And it was like, "What you, what you doing?" And Utica was like, "Oh, I'm getting ready for the finale because uh, they ch- they told me that I needed to get a little less kook and a little more this. Oh, I'm working on it." And she was like, "Oh, like, okay, Ooh. girl. Now we know that Utica is a fashion queen. I don't care what nobody say about how weird they don't like she her. This is sickness. She has a different eye for fashion. She's using different pairs of eyes. Mm-hmm. You don't have normal human eyes. I don't know what they are, <laughs> but they're not human." Okay, right. she's a different type of species, and she see fashion different. Um, she's talking about she gonna have so many different looks. Like I really feel like this bitch might come in in a cocoon and like just start unpeeling and, <laughs> and really and, and like literally turn into a butterfly. I don't. Whatever it is, is going to be sickening because she don't miss on the runway. She do not miss on the runway. She don't. I, I really, I really just I like what Utica. Utica, again, some queens are not good at drag race, but some queens want our heart over. And I think Utica is one of those. I don't think Utica is good at what drag race needs you to be to win it. But I do right. think Utica is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. So let's get into our favorite commercials. Um, so we have, we'll just go in any order. Um, so we got Candy Muse. <laughs> The, with the their drink is called Decay Special. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that commercial? I didn't like it. You didn't. Um, it has some lines. It's the bus still running. Like it had it had little zingers, but overall, 
I wasn't sold <laughs> on it at all. I think she looked cute. Um, it's kind of like flat for me. I like the little twerking at the end when she was drinking the milk. I thought that was cute because it's like the K special, the sexy kitty. Uh, yeah, but I don't think I don't think it was great. I do think it was a good commercial when I compare them to the canon of all of them. I think it was good. I think it was good, and I was just ha- I was, was happy safe. to see. Yeah, I was happy to see Candy not suck. So I was like, I was happy for her, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Um, then we got uh Olivia Lux with the live, uh L I V with the E and in parentheses. Uh this this was I I, I could have no. without it. First of all, it reminded me of. Let me get this poet wrong because I always say the wrong poet. Uh, I think it's Sanchez. <laughs> it was at it was at the end of Lovecraft Country. Her one point, okay. she's like, "Live, live, 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 live." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it. That's what it took me back to, and I couldn't it just stop didn't. laughing. Oh. Now, it's sad <laughs> when they said, "I'm a, the, like you smile too much." Like I don't want to tell no black person that they smile too much. Have your joy, baby, and be happy. Right, but she do need to. But if you are show some range in the performance, you know, say if you are acting and you're trying to tell a narrative. Your characterization has to match the story you're trying to tell, and it just didn't match. No, I, so I could have like it was thing. it was very flat. And then what she but she looked be great because she was like half penis, and I was like, okay, so are you going to do these kind of jokes all the way through? Because if not, this doesn't make sense. Like, right? Are you gonna and do I think this? these past two weeks is where we're seeing the um the gap. I don't want to say immaturity. In That's what like, it, we're we're. It, we are seeing, uh, we, we are now seeing how young of a queen she is. Yes, that's uh, what it she is. She came in, she's so polished, she's so talented, she's beautiful. And we were all like, she's only two years into this? This is crazy. But these past two weeks, we are now seeing that she doesn't quite know who she is as a queen yet. Um, she's not firmly cemented in. This is Olivia Lux. This is what Olivia Lux brings, which is why she struggled these past two weeks because. The past two weeks were challenges where you have to know who you are, know how you present, know how you translate to the audience, and then give the judges that. And she really doesn't know yet, so she doesn't know what to give. Or if she knows, it's just not its not solidified with enough um, uh, experience to, to have the range that we needed to in the competition. Like, this is the yeah. type of person, though, that, like, in the acting world that a director or an acting coach falls in love with because she it she has it all you know we just need to start getting yeah. her in the roles to really just like let it blossom um we yeah. talked about god make god sex sex juice it was an okay commercial like the idea of what the pop is is not a bad idea it didn't read no. well in the commercial i also think god makes god sex sex juice is a good name because there's always those I like it. Where, the, where the thing has that long name like that's also mm-hmm. a thing like, it don't need to be. It's like, God make God sex, sex juice. Like, I like that. Like, that's funny. And yeah. it's like, it is a mouthful. And that's part, that's like, that's part of it. I think that um, was the purpose. Yeah. Uh, rose with rose. The name of the drink is is perfect. It's the perfect name. I of loved the drink. it. I love how she plugged her sister Jen with the rose. That was And cute. it's the best. Ro- and it, it's also, it's social media relevant. Like, that is a, that was like a big meme. It still is. Like, the yeah. face crack of the century. Okay. Which sidebar? Everyone thinks Jan was robbed and she should have won. Gigi won and she should have won that challenge. She ate that Madonna performance. Gigi beat her ass. Now let me tell you what. Jan did a Gigi beat all the all the ass. (laughs) Jan did a good job. And Jan went first. Going first is rough, but like Yeah. But again, I thought Jan looked a little bit again, kind of like Denali. She kind of looked like a white girl doing the steps. Like she wasn't sitting in the pocket. Like it didn't have when Gigi stood on the stage, when the minute she got up there, she was synced. She knew exactly what it was. Yeah. And and to think that's not the one she was going to do. She wanted to do the cone bra one. She would not have won if she got cone bra. She would not have won. No. And shout out to Britta, because that was she didn't do the choreography great, but it was also not great choreography. <laughs> like it There wasn't, wasn't a lot to do with that. And they provide <laughs> them with those looks. They give them those looks. So like, I And guess, that look was ugly. It, it, was it didn't fit right. It wasn't right. But anyway, yeah. so back onto this. We got to stop going off. Uh, uh, we be having fun on here, y'all. We hope y'all have fun, too. I'm um, sorry, but I just don't think Jan won that. Or should have won. No, Jan, did, Jan didn't win that. Now, I can see why she felt robbed, because she had finally done Like She's like, I need to win a challenge, and this is the one that she could have won. 
I would have been, but Gigi, wa- Gigi waxed her. She did. Yeah. Uh, I think Jada Essence Hall did better than, uh, oh, she <laughs> better was than so Jan. Good. So. She was so good. <laughs> you didn't even rank in the top two in that challenge. Whip smart. Um, <laughs> uh, we got Simone with Sweet Tooth. Everybody got Sweet Tooth. Ah. I loved it. So, Simone studies. Okay. She studied, well, at least. This is how I feel. She studies black for black uh, exploitation films, black exploitation films. She studies '90s sitcom comedy, yeah. right? Because she was. The we've cadence, talked about this before. She the rhythm, the cadence, the timing. It's very '90s sitcom. Mama studies, and not only does she study, she applies it very well. Um, so I enjoyed it. Um, the jingle was everything. Everybody has sweet talk. Um She she deserved I, this win. I also don't think that Simone, some people say Simone always gives the same character. I don't think Simone gives the same character. I think the issue is that y'all have like a very reductive idea of what like black, what like what black reference looks like. Um, yeah. And I get and see the nuance and the details and the difference because like her performance in uh, the flag factory was more so Maxine Shaw. This was not Maxine Shaw, you know, no. this wasn't, this wasn't that. So, um, and to like- to to echo your point um, about people's reductive um, or simplistic kind of view of blackness and black representation, this was my issue with the discourse surrounding Snatch Game when they were saying she's giving um, Jennifer Lewis. Like, no, Jennifer Lewis is the only elder black person that you know. <laughs> so you see, you see similar cadence, you see similar patterns of speech. So you automatically point to the one black person that you are <laughs> that you are familiar with, as opposed to getting into the character that she's actually performing. Right? And she also like, was not just don't know no much, better. She also wasn't serving <laughs> that much Jennifer Lewis. Jennifer Lewis is like, if maybe I had got some more crude jokes and a little bit more profanity, I would have thought it was Jennifer Lewis. But I just wasn't. It wasn't giving me Jennifer Lewis like how Jennifer Lewis typically shoots her comedy. You know. Um, moving on trucking along um, we're going to go through these ones kind of quickly we talk about Tina Burner and Burning Up Um, I'd like to talk about this Mm -hmm. I think Tina Burner's commercial was just fine Um, was it the best one absolutely not but in the words of Detox I'm not saying I'm the best but I ain't the worst like it was (laughs) it was it, it, it was a good commercial um it was a good commercial. I like the idea of being like this uptight housewife and then it's setting you loose. She looked good as fuck in that red outfit and I love that red wig with the bang. That was so mm-hmm. cute. Um, I I liked it. Do I think she could have got more slutty when she took the drink? Yes, I think she could have did. Like, uh, like you know, like the tearaway that she had Rosé in last week to the leopard print little slate. Like, mm-hmm. that would have been a good moment to have something like that, but she let Rosé wear it already. So, like, what she gonna do? Um, yeah. Um, I think that would have been a good moment for that. I also think the um, Hell Yes was a little bit too much emphasized because the name of the drink is Burn It Up. And Hell Yes is kind of yeah. like the the effect. So, like, you know how you drink a pop and you go, mm, or ah. So the Hell Yes is that after utterance that happens. So it needed to be more yeah. Burn It Up, you know? But I thought it was a good commercial. Yeah. I thought she looked good. And hers made sense. Yeah. At least, at least we could uh, follow the story. Yeah, at least you can follow the story. As opposed to like Got Mix or even Candies for me. Oh, and then, yeah, or Uticas. (laughs) Fucking Uticas. Oh, Utica, what was this? Explain to me why. What was this? Explain to me why she is dressed like some weird white satanic witch sucking from a cow udder. I don't. I don't. Mama, what is this? I was so confused about what was happening. You Why won't great. you stop? What are you doing? I want her to stop doing this. Stop. <laughs> that, that was what the entire time the commercial was playing. I was like, turn this off. No more of this. We don't need this anymore. <laughs> well, Simone said it. Like, I worked with her last week. She kooky and she weird and stuff. But her coping mechanism is also to be kooky and weird. So when she gets right. nervous, you put kooky and weird on top of kooky and weird. It's too much. It's very taquita. It's very, very taquita. Too much. <laughs> too much neck, honey. <laughs> too much neck. I'm on top. We said it last week. Be on top of the vocal. Top of the vocal. Utica's not on top of 
the vote. She is not on. She. I think she's a little. She's a little insecure. And. Mm-hmm. Her and then she gets too weird. Then she just gets too and weird. Then, yeah, and then she she falls back on the weird kooky stuff that you know we love. But when you use it as a crutch, then it can become burdensome, almost. Yeah, but um, apparently it's working for her because let's move on. The top, you know, the top queens of this week. We have Simone with another win, baby. Win number motherfucking four. That's how you four. do it, bitch. Um, uh, and then we have Rosé with the second with a with a with a double win. Also, I don't mind having two double wins because last week technically wasn't a double win; it was a team's challenge. So the whole team wins. Yes. This was yes. a legitimate double clear. win, and we have had yeah. seasons with a double win and a team win in the same challenge. And Shea Coulee, two of her four wins were group wins with Shea uh, with Sasha. So I think Sasha, this is yeah. like okay. Um, yeah, but. Uh, and Rosé was so happy. She And what, what Rosé said, to be on the same caliber as Simone behind me, boo-boo, I'm doing just fine. I ain't worried about it. I'm good. Okay? Listen, and Rosé deserves, because we haven't talked about the runways yet, but that runway, let me not get ahead of myself. She deserved. They both deserve to win. They both deserve. Uh, but Utica was a hot-ass mess, okay? Um, the bottom two... In her commercial. The, in not her on commercial. the runway, though. And I don't want to say bottom <laughs> two. Uh, the bottom four, Olivia... Uh, was her commercial was bad. Uh yeah. God Mix commercial was bad. Utica's yeah. was the worst. And I don't even like it was on a totally different caliber of bad. And then Tina and Burner she knew it. the judges didn't like what Tina Burner was serving. So that's yeah. your bottom four. Let's critique these looks real quick. Uh we're gonna do a a speed round of Satan Center. You're allowed to comment on two people's looks only, but Satan Center for all. So uh, the category this week was Beast Couture. The girls were supposed to interpret that however they see fit. They were supposed to, you know, be high fashion glam monsters. So up first, we have Got Mick. I say Saint. Saint. She looked great. This was by Marco Marco. Um, Candy Muse. Center. Burn it. Sen- the center. Yikes. That was ugly. Uh, this is going to be the one. This is going to be one I comment on. This ranks up with La La Reese, uh design challenge and Elliot's flamingo costume. This ranks as one of the worst of the season. This is bad. Yeah. This uh, is bad. It's latex with an inflatable alien strap to your back. And, and the, the makeup, makeup, I don't know what the makeup was. It was bad. And again, those big red lips triggered me as a black person. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. All together, uh-huh. like... I want her to be in the bottom for that runway alone. She didn't deserve to be in the bottom this week, but that runway was terrible. Uh, terrible. Uh, it was bad. I agree. And this is a center, baby. You in hell. Olivia Lux. Um, Saint. It's a good look. Saint. It's confused about the colors, but she still looks good. Well, it's kind of giving Mike and Sully from Monsters, Inc., which I thought was a bit... Was a oh, cool. okay, okay, okay. I get it. No. Um, yeah. So I felt that it's something about the outfit that's missing a little bit. And I think it's because like the middle is still is so plain. And when we go to speaking of uh, similar uh, outfit that is similar, but on a whole nother level, Rosé, who is the saint Ooh. this week. This is the best look on that runway. Now, I'm going to tell this you, is what, there's, another, the week. there's another look <laughs> that is sickening on this runway, which we go get to next. But this is the look. This is the fucking Amazing. look. When she came on that runway, I guessed. I said, this is wonderful. And that makeup, for me... I have that, never some, seen Rosé look so good ever. Sometimes that all over full, you know, colored makeup, some, it can look real blotchy and real sloppy. But it was blended perfectly. Like, everything about this look was amazing. She looked great. Well, this is one of the things I'm going to tell you as a technique that made it look good. So, as when Olivia's was just fur, right... She said mm-hmm. it was fur and feathers and those spikes. So it has so much different texture to it, which was what gave mm-hmm. it that light, fluttery feel. Because it was fur is heavy, but feather it gives you bird. So she had to mix the two to give it that. It mm-hmm. is genius how her she looks so snatched. Rose is not a tall person, and she looks so tall in this outfit. Mm-hmm. The hair was genius. What the fuck is oh this? Oh my wig? goodness. This wig yes. is everything. 
the shade of red was matching to the shoe, which mind you, she's worn the same pair of shoes this entire competition. She said she only got, she bought the same shoe 12 times and just had to paint them all because she couldn't find shoes, you know, in, in another oh, time. Oh, because of the pandemic. Um, oh, okay. Pandemic, I didn't know that. So she, saw, she found a website who had her shoe in her side. So mm-hmm. her and her, and the Stephanie's title was like, just buy the same shoe, we'll paint them. Just so she bought the same shoe multiple times. Um, That's how you do it. Make it so, work. This look was so sickening. The way she looked so light on her feet as she walked down that runway. She was a demon cat. She was a, a demon cat tricks or whatever. It's hot. Yeah. Smoking hot. Um uh Tina Burner on the runway. I'm proud of Tina. This is this is a, a, one of the one of the few times I thought Tina looked good. Now the makeup Yeah, I didn't hate this. No, was not the best makeup. It was not the <laughs> best makeup. But when does Tina ever do the best makeup? Okay. Um it's part this of her look, charm. Though, this <laughs> look, though, was a really good, smart look. I love yeah. this. That was well thought out. It was fully fleshed out. It worked. It worked. She looked good. And the fact that it still had a waist, it still had hips, even though she made herself big. Like, it's a big yeah. look. And people like, she mm-hmm. made her look so big. Since when is big and bad synonymous? Like, bitch, be expansive. Take up space. Go ahead on. Yeah. <laughs> look, giving fat phobia to me. Yeah, a little fat phobia tease. And then Miss <laughs> Utica. Miss Utica. I thought, okay. Ooh, I'm going to say purge. She looked great. I'm going to say purgatory, and this is why. Because I have to think about okay. the challenge. This dress on its own is absolutely stunning. This is mm-hmm. so good. But I don't necessarily think that she looks enough like a beast. It seems like she's... Mm. It, I wanted her... If I wanted to feel Utica go more animalistic and less kook in the face you know i wanted her to be mm-hmm. more just more engulfed by the fur as if like maybe yeah. this maybe this fur is possessed and when it attaches to her kind of like venom or something it turns mm-hmm. her into this thing it felt too separate it felt to me like she had and i think bob said this this might not be an original thought or idea but like i felt like it looked like she had slain the beast and worn it rather than her being the her being a part of the beast you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i wanted her uh-huh. to be a part of the beast but this you know would have been sickening do you remember her nighttime look from week one or week two since she was in the loser group yeah if she would have swapped that look and this one way perfect look, it would have been just fine amazing it amazing been just fine Yes. And then the Ebony Enchantress, Simone. Saint, baby. Saint. But I will say, at first, I was not feeling it. I had to look at it real hard. So I was like, it looks like... Well, it's a furry costume, went, and I love it. Yeah, but at least she went to the costume store and, and, and put some earrings on it. And, and So at first, I was like, I don't know if I like this. And I love me some Simone. But the more and more I looked at it, I was like, this is great. Come on, furry lives matter. That's what she tweeted. Like, I didn't even realize I was so... Uh, uh, okay, go. Because, well, you know, the furries, man, you know, that's the thing, baby. You know, long as it's yeah. really two consenting adults, I say, do you, boo. I don't... I couldn't imagine... I'm already covered in enough fur myself. I can't see match myself putting on another fur suit outside of the one I already yeah. live in. But, you know, um, this look was cute to me for several reasons. One, because it had... It has a drag to it. I, we never see someone with body or shape or, you know, like, and I think mm-hmm. that's, that up and down is cute because it's people that look like that and it's sexy. But right. I think for the drag, the hyper e- expansion of the silhouette is major. So if you skinny, mm-hmm. the waist need to be even skinnier. Like, and Violet does this. And I'm not saying people should be on, on yeah. that, uh, on Violet. I don't know if that's healthy, that, but. Um, I was going to say that looks unhealthy <laughs> and but, uncomfortable. Uh, but like, like she said, and I got my bamboo earrings up in my ears. I was like, I mm-hmm. love the commentary. Um, and it was just in the fucking hoochie shorts and the thing. I do think she should have had either a yeah. belly ring or um, like there's a couple little things I would have liked to add. I would have liked that the paws had more nail to it so that the paws was like claws. Mm-hmm. Was like, also, Simone looked stunning and that was part of my issue. Simone should have had her done her face to be a fox mm, yeah. rather if it was a nose or whiskers out her real face she's mm-hmm. looked like a stu- like a stunning simone in a furry suit and that's where through it to me but the competition was out of this world yeah and to me that's why rose's look rose was the look from head to toe rose was that monster yeah. she didn't have one of mm-hmm. monsters outfit simone uh rose is and was a fucking cat demon monster 
Right. And it was right. stunning. So again, like we said, the winner of this week's episode is Simone and Rose. So that gives Rose two wins and Simone Rose two wins, no bottom twos, and Simone with four mm, wins impressive. and one bottom two. Um uh, and our bottom four queens are Olivia, Mick, Utica, and Tina Burner. The the they call the names in this order. They let Olivia free. And then they got Mick there. And then our bottom mm-hmm. two is Utica and Tina. Do you agree? I don't. Um, I think I would have put Mick in the bottom. I think Mick would have been in the bottom. Mick's commercial yeah, was so bad. It was, it was so I bad. I would have swapped Tina and Mick. Yeah. Oh, did we? And Mick's look was cute, but it wasn't so yeah. cute that it was like, you know, it so wasn't was Rose. It wasn't Rose <laughs> yeah. level cute. <laughs> yeah. You know, so was Tina's exactly. Um, so I would have put her in the bottom. Olivia do needed to be in the bottom because she needed to know that she's not doing as good as, as she should be, you know. But I don't think it was Tina's yeah. time to go. I do say Tina, I do think Tina was Tina doing the best in the competition compared to the other girls. No, no, but it's Tina. And also, had there been times where I thought Tina should have won and she didn't like or been in the top and she didn't like the week when they played yeah. her with the um, with the Chicago esque type of challenge with That's the music. Still makes this looked amazing coming down that runway in that yellow last outfit. That was the most sickening yes. I've ever seen her look in the whole show. Um, yes. But nonetheless, our bottom two are Utica Queen and Tina Burner, and they are singing uh, lip syncing to My Humps by Black Eyed Peas. Black Eyed Peas, yeah. Um, my Humps. Um, <laughs> Fergalish is deaf, but so this is My Humps. Uh, again, the song selection this season has been absolutely superb. I cannot wait to see what they yeah. listen to in the finale if these songs is that good. I Ooh. cannot wait to see what they fucking do. Yes, it's going to be good. Like, they better they better come hard in the paint, okay? Yeah, um, you know they are. So they lip sync for their life. And ultimately, Tina Burner gets sent home and Utica has won a second lip sync. Mm-hmm. And I have to say that in all my love for Utica that the judges have to be smoking crack cocaine. <laughs> you think you get a loss? My humps? And she was being like, what What was she doing? I, for me, I appreciated her staying in character. Um, the, the category was beast, and so she wanted to still be in that characterization of creepy and, and let me and, tell you this and weird Avery, stuff. If this so song come I appreciate on, that. If this song come on, not ever see your ass hunch over and start pawing and going like this, I'm gonna beat your ass. I'm gonna hit <laughs> if you. the category is beast and I'm dressed. That's not as the a category demon. anymore. The category is living <laughs> for your life. The category is living for your life. I appreciated that, that she up. stayed in character. Tina Burner killed that lip sync. I agree. I think Tina did well. I think they both did well in their own unique ways. She gave me um, the corner sisters. Th- she gave me some twerk. Yeah. <laughs> she gave me a floor slide. She gave me the wop. She gave me the running man. She gave me everything that I needed to it to have gave. And Utica didn't. Well, I will say this about Tina. She looked defeated in her face. Well, why, would, why wouldn't she be? Why wouldn't she be? But when it's time to lip sync for your life, and then let me not, not to discredit someone's emotional state. Um, but we see it all the time. Someone has to lip sync every week. And you know there's a possibility you could go home. You have to snap out of that and put on a performance so your ass can stay. She put on a and performance, thought- but her face, her face, like, she did well, but her face did not I communicate guess. that she was all the way committed to me. And I think that's what so, the, I, that so combined you- with the judges don't really like her. So. Okay, <laughs> forget what the judges got to say because they is who they is and I don't know them, but I know you. Who would you have sent home? I'd have kept Utica, honestly. You would have kept Utica. I'd have kept Utica, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I'm about the virtuosity and the legitimacy and the the sanctity of the lip sync, and Utica lost the lip sync. And I this whole narrative now now Utica will get a lip sync assassin narrative, and I just cannot let that 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 can never be a thing. I don't. I don't think she's going to get a lip sync. No, I'm there. just kidding. I she don't think. Lip, she, I don't she's think just, she's, yeah, she's a good performer. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to dub her a lip sync yeah. assassin. Well, we know for a fact the next time that she's in the bottom, she will probably go home, and that will probably be next yeah. week. So she probably going to be that girl who lip sync three weeks in a row. Uh, and it, yeah, and goes home the third time. And goes home the third time. So, um, mm-hmm. 
by you, um, Utica would be so, like it's only six girls left, and we already know. We already know who the to top. Like we look at them right now. I'm just trying to figure out: is it gonna be Olivia or Candy? Like in the top four, which one will it be? Yeah. You know? um, who do you think it should be? Um, I would. I think Olivia's package that she probably has prepared for the ending would be more impactful than Candy's. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, they prepare for the end, you know? Um, and I think right. her package would be better. I also don't think Candy is a contender to win. And I think yeah, although I think so I, although Olivia, although Simone is on another level, I think Simone, I think Olivia, if Olivia won, it could be justified under the fact that Rue likes queens like that. Like, she's a very Rue, yeah. she's a Rue girl, you know? That's the Definitely. her style of drag, and we know how Rue does. When he Rue likes those girls that do what mm-hmm. she does because that's the type of queen Rue is. Right. You know. How do you um, feel about? How do you feel about the narrative that uh, production is saving Candy? I think that Candy makes good television. I think Candy, to me, is the driving force of the uh, of like the pop culture narrative of this of the show, like of the like the uh, of the reality TV portion of the show. Mm-hmm. She really kind of gets it, and they have a storyline. Like she grew up a certain kind of way. We got the funny voice. We got the blah blah blah. She we, she get into it, then she gets you know she feels good about like honestly like Candy will probably win a challenge. She'll do like Crystal Method and win one at least, you know. And it'll be mm-hmm. towards the end. It'll be too late to matter anyway, you know. Um, yeah. They, uh, I I don't know how much production plays in what's happening there, but then it feels like. I don't know. It feels like this time too. Like I know that the judges were tired of Tina. Now is that part of them producing the story? I don't think so. I just think the judges were over Tina, so Tina had to go. Yeah. Even though Tina yeah. could have did a triple backflip handspring, and they probably still would have sent her home. Because honestly, what yeah. I think what RuPaul wanted to do was be like, "There's no lip sync this week. I'll see you later, Tina." But she couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. she was. That'd be so mean. <laughs> well, we know there's no way you can objectively look at that and say that Ru judged that on the lip sync. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, they were just, they were over her. They don't really like her. They don't really see it for Tina. And what's that? Um, and they said, if I ever, I, I could go my whole life whatever, without ever seeing red, orange, and yellow again. You know? Um, I know I can too. At least together. <laughs> girl, let me put on my yellow wig. Uh, nappy mm-hmm. wig. Okay, I have, a, uh-huh. I have another question for it. Uh, so, can you give can you give us and the people um, a rundown of the wins? How many wins does each queen have? Yes, I can do that. You know, I have all the numbers. <laughs> I <know you> do. <laughs> okay, so so far the winners are Got Mick has two wins, and I think I, I, I think that's it for the wins for Got Mick. Um, Candy has none. Olivia Lux has two. Rose now has two. Simone has four. Tina Burner went home with no wins, and Utica has one win. And the only win that we do not have accounted for is Denali, who won once also. Okay. And how so that's where the much inf- how much influence do you think the scorecard plays when it comes to picking the winner of the challenge? Oh, the winner of the show. I think it matters up until a point. I think it matters to enter the finale. And I think once you're there, it doesn't matter anymore. Because uh-huh. particularly with season nine, season nine yep, changed the fabric <laughs> of RuPaul's drag race. It changed the game. I think up until that point, math mattered more. Like, Ruth still may pick the girl who won one less challenge or whatever, but, like, it was, Mm -hmm. you you had to turn it, you know? I think the scorecard mattered more. I do think the scorecard counts for something, because if that's the point, what's the point of me? Like, I might as well come and suck then, you know? like Yeah, what's the point of keeping score? Um, (laughs) You know, I do think that the score, but I do think it should be a cumulative thing. Like, uh, Like, I think sometimes some girls just have a little bit more, they might not... When, like for example, Evie Ali won one challenge the whole time she was there. But Evie mm-hmm. Ali came with a very specific vision, a very specific package, and did well. Yeah. They were in the top. The only time they ever were in the bottom is when they lip sang against Brooklyn, and it was one of the greatest lip syncs to ever happen on RuPaul's Drag Race history. Like yeah. after that, she was always in the top three. You know, she was just edged out by the girls who were a little less kook, and that has to do more so to do with taste level. It's like what Rue likes, you know. So when right, it got to right. the end, Rue didn't have no choice but to say, "Like, I'm here between Brooklyn and Evie. Who's who's innovative? Who's creative? Who's the future of drag?" You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was no other choice yeah. at that point. Mm-hmm. Now, in my opinion, I could have done. I could. I would have been okay to see Silky in the top two with Evie. 
Silky won a lot of challenges that season. And I thought that she did a good job at Drag Race. That is my opinion. I thought when you go on yep. Drag Race, you need to have a certain type of charisma, a certain type of causing, shaking shit up, or what have you. And I thought that she did do that. <laughs> I thought she played the game how you should go on and play Drag Race. And she did yeah. that. And I think Silky won three challenges. Yeah. And she's rumored to be on All Star Six. Oh, and the rumor is that she coming in there as a lip sync assassin. So we will see. Because we saw what she did. With and I'm ready to. But she made up for herself she's in had... the finale. Because her finale lip sync against Brooklyn was good. Yeah, I was going to say, that lip sync was one of the worst of the franchise. So for her to come back and win all these lip syncs and be an assassin of the, be the assassin of the season, I'm interested to see it. I hope, I hope, really hope she does well on All-Star 6. Um she not gonna win it. I but know. I think she'll do. She not gonna win. Ginger um, Minj is on the same season, and so is Eureka. Um, so I would see them giving it to one of them instead of Sil- instead of Silky. Let me tell you something. I am less than enthused to have Eureka O'Hara back on my TV screen. Yeah, we ain't got to talk about she it. Can go. We ain't got to talk about she it till it go. come on. Speaking of which, we got to get on <laughs> Paramount Plus, y'all, because they moving into Paramount Plus. So I got to get another app, so we gonna have to do that. Um, we yeah, got yeah. comments. We go play these two comments, and then we're gonna um tell you all to have a good evening. Oh, they put transcripts. You know. It sounds like the sun. Love you guys. Melanocytes are everything. I want some more. <laughs> I didn't even just compliment the chocolate. Thank you. Chocolate is. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> ah, yes. I finally got my hands on the Travis Scott burger. Ah, here it is. Mmm! It tastes like jail and Vicodin's. Oh my god, I'm seeing shit. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I hope you okay. You're having a good time. Yeah. Do you think that's Shay? You thought that you think that's Shay? I don't know. Is that Shay? I don't know. Cause I don't, I, Can she disguise her voice that well? I, I think so. <laughs> you'd be surprised what Shay can do. Like I, you'd be surprised. And Shay, you should be doing some voice voiceover work. That's talent. Don't tell him that because then they have been a. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, they. Uh, with that being said, y'all, I'm going to Miami on and I, look. I'm not gonna be with the hoodlums that's out there acting a the fool. I am vaccinated yes. and masked up. My girl's fully vaccinated. Me- Mm-hmm. I got me some. I need to put that in my in my profile in my you know my profile. Vex for um, vex. <laughs> well, look, I didn't want to talk about it because you know on Friday. So in my life, I have like so Friday is make love night, right? So like me and my partner and my little boo thing. Uh-huh. Like Friday is like Fridays after drag races. Like we we get started before drag race start, and we take a break, and then we finish when drag race is over. You know what I'm saying? It sounds fun. Uh-huh. So this is what we do on Friday. We typically order out on Friday, and you know we have us a good mm-hmm. time. Uh. We took these edibles, and matter of fact, you know what, y'all, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all week. This is Drag from the Left, your weekly. <laughs> if you review RuPaul's Drag Race from a medical left perspective, please be sure to follow us online at Drag from the Left. That's D R A G F T S. You can always tweet at us at hashtag Drag from the Left. I am you your so hostess with the most, the very Reverend Doctor Juanita Bindo. And this is Avery. My drag name this week is Brolatarian. And we will see you all next week. Love you. Bye. Bye.